things that they're going through. Yeah. And I know some of the people that they're running around with, and I'm telling you, it's nothing but trouble. Sure. Parents, we have got to get a grip on our kids. Sure, sure. Brother. We need to know what's going on, where they're at, who they're running around with. Amen. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, we're living in a day. Yes. This was going to be one of my messages for tonight. I've had about two or three different ones. Yeah. But we as parents have really, 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 really got to make a point to get our kids in the house of God. Sure. Under sound Amen, doctrine. Terry, yes. Sound doctrine. Yes. I can't emphasize that enough. Amen. Because there's so many churches today running rapid, preaching any old thing goes. Yeah. Just come and be a part of this family and right. everything's going to be all right eternally with you. Right. It's not true. Sure. It's not true. Sure. They're more concerned about the numbers sure. and the money than they are about the soul. Amen. Yeah. Right. And I remember as a young boy when I got saved, didn't have anybody to mentor me. Mm -hmm. Didn't have anybody to disciple me. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one way and one area that we fail today in a lot of ways. And I thank God for the disciples class that helps these young converts mm -hmm. to know how to live spiritually. Mm -hmm. To know how to walk each and every day with the Lord and grow and grow. And that's what I try to do with the youth. I try to teach them how to act right, how to talk right, sure. how to walk right. Sure. So if they come home living some other way, it's not my fault. I promise you that. Sure. Because I, I really get on pretty hard <laughs> sometimes. I really do. And because when I was younger, I needed somebody to get on me Amen. really, really, really hard. Me too. And to love me in a good way. Sure. And, and that's what I try to do. I love all these kids, and I'm there for them. I've opened my home up to them. And I, yep. God bless you for it. God I bless you. I love them. But if you would, open your Bible tonight to the book of First John. First John, I think this was about the third thought I had this evening. I was sitting there in my study about 6 o'clock. My wife was sitting there looking, watching me. I don't know what she's doing. I guess I'm that good to look at. I don't know. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I got up and went to my other study and come back in with another thought that come across my mind. And she said, what are you doing? You're not switching thoughts right here at 6 o'clock, are you? You must be crazy. Well, no. Because I've had God do it when I've got the pulpit before. Yes. So he gave me plenty of time to study what he laid on my heart tonight. And I thank God for that. And I want to be an encouragement tonight to somebody, to try to help somebody uh, with some of these verses here. And if I'm going to tell you, if you're struggling <laughs> and you need God to do something, you need to realize how big God is. Amen. How good God is. You get it this book here. Yes. The love that God has for you and I is just amazing and unbelievable. Yes. And I thank God for that. First John chapter number four. If you got a Schofield study Bible, I'm on page 1324. <laughs> 1324. We'll begin reading in verse number seven, and I'll quit when the Holy Spirit gets on me. Yeah. I'll be praying that it turns up pretty quick. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. That'll help you right there. Have you ever felt like you're not loved? Yes, sir. Yeah. We've all been there. We still go through it from time to time. I want to tell you something. God loves you. Whether you're saved, whether you're lost, whether you're in the hog pen, whether you're in the valley, or whether you're on the mountain, God loves you. God loves you. Yes. Verse number nine. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, Amen. and sent his Son to be the propitiation Amen. for our sins. And thank God for the sacrifice Amen, brother. that we had for our sins. Yes. Thank God for that. Yes, Nobody sir. else 
could take your sin away. You're right. Only Jesus. Amen. Verse 11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. Boy, I could stop and preach there for a little while. Yeah. That would do all of us some good to, to learn love. to love one another. Amen. I like young Christians, especially the Christian men. They get in, but they don't really know how to take a man and tell them that they love them. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of pour it on a little more than normal because I'm trying to get them to understand that we, the children of God, are to love one another. Yes. And I love expressing my love toward other yeah. people. Sure. So let's do that. Sure. Where do I get to? Verse number 12. Says, no man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. I like that. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Whew, isn't it great how much yeah. the spirit shows up here at Bethlehem? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Some days I just don't want to leave. Yeah. yeah. Because when you go out these doors, the world is outside. Sure it is. Us. And the world is outside to beat you and I down. Yes. Oh, I love getting in the spirit. Yes. Love it. Let me pick back up here. Let me go to verse number 14. It says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. I'm going to stop there for sake of time because I don't want to keep you too late tonight. But if you get the opportunity to read this book, it will be a blessing to you. Yes, yes, I want to share a thought with you tonight, something that's been weighing on my heart, something that has helped me, and I hope and pray that it will be something that will help you. Oh, how I love Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I love him. Amen. I can't, I could sit here all night and tell you how good God has been to this old boy. Amen. So many times I've seen God do something miraculous in my life and in my family's life. Mm -hmm. It amazes me what an awesome God we serve. Sure it does. So I want to share some things out of the verses of Scripture here tonight that we, and oh, how we need to love Him. We need to love Him. Number one, I love Him because I remember every day that He died for me. Amen. For me. For me. Now, I can say He died for each and every one of us in here tonight, but it's more personal. Yes, for me. Yes. When I realized that He did that, for me. Amen. For me. Undeserving, not worthy Amen. of nothing but hell, but he died for this old boy. Yes, he did. Look at verse number 10. It says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He was my sacrifice. Yes. I could not obtain eternal life any other way. You're right. Not through baptism. Nope. Not through paying my tithes. Nope. Not from being a member of the local church. Right. And so many has got that so out of whack today. Mm -hmm. But only through the finished work of what Jesus did at Calvary am I saved. Amen. And what a blessing and a privilege to know that I am a child of God. Yeah. I don't have to doubt that anymore, even though the devil tries to beat me up about it. Sure does. Uh -huh. But I take him back to the place when I realized that I was lost. Sure. I could not do it on my own. Could not work my way there. Amen, Brother Terry. There was nothing I could do. Amen. But just beg God to save me. To beg him to save me. And you know what? He did. Yes. He did. Sometimes I can't get over why he did. Mm -hmm. Why was I so deserving of God's mercy, God's love? I don't know. Because he created me in his image. He wants us all to spend an eternity in heaven with him. 
Thank God that He died for me. Amen. That He died for you. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. I'm reminded of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Gave Him. How many of you in here has got sons? Most of us. Yeah. I can't bear the thought of allowing my son to go through what Jesus did. It really hits home as a dad. Understanding better what God did for you and I. How he so willingly gave his son for you and I. That all we have to do is believe in him. Believe in him. Oh, how I love Jesus. By remembering every day he died for me. Number two. By remembering every day he's my day star. Yeah. Boy, I've needed that the past few days. Yes. In this dark world that we've been living in. Rain, freezing rain, clouds, cold weather. Lord have mercy. Second Peter 119. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Wherein do ye do you do, you do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Yeah. Every day that day star helps me to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Every day that day star mm -hmm. breathes for me. Mm -hmm. Every day that day star is shining that I might not walk in sin. Because mm -hmm. every day we're all faced with temptations. Everywhere we go. Things we see on TV. Things we see on the internet. Things your kids are exposed to every day at school. It's not like it was when I was in school. Things have really, really gone bad since I was in school. It amazes me some of the things that these kids tell me that they have right in front of them at school. The choices they have. And I thank God that so many of them have said no. One simple little word, no. See, that's what the day star will do for you. If you're ever not sure what to do, call on him. Let that day star lead you every day. Everywhere you go, everything you do, everything you watch. Thank God for the day star. That's just another reason why I love it. Why I love it. Preach on, brother. Why I love it. What I think about when I got away from God for so many years in my life, mm -hmm. partying with many of you here today, some of the dumb things we did, oh, yeah. places we went. Sure. It amazes me that God still has his hand on me. Yeah, amen. That's God. Oh, man, I'm feeling something right there. Go ahead and preach on it. Lord have mercy. And so many of us in here can sit here and say the same thing. Man, I can't believe I went to some of the places that I went to. Hung out with some of the people that I run around with. Drink some of that stuff that I used to love so much. Thank God for the day star that led me from death so many times. He should have took me on out of this world, but he didn't because he loves me. And that's why I love him. Go ahead. That's why I love him. Amen. He's done so much for this old boy. Why he never called me to preach, I don't know. I want to share this with you. My wife probably won't kill me. She doesn't have a chance. I want to tell you, I've got a good wife. Amen. Somebody's been by my side. It's been my backbone. God even give her my rib. I thank him for that. I remember when God called me to preach. It'd be four years ago this May. 
He had to get me in a low place. I don't like them low places. No. I don't like that feeling of being low in the valley. Feel like you've been beat up. Oh yeah. But sometimes God has to take us there so He can carry us to somewhere better. I remember I was running a little late on the power bill. Actually, right up to the deadline. Mailed it a couple of days before the deadline was actually to cut it off. Now this is God. Just happened to get off work early that day. For some reason, that was God. That was my day star. So I called, wanted to make sure that they had got it in time. Well, no, they didn't get it. It's the mail. It's always been there in two days. But not this time. That was God's way of trying to get me where he needed me. So I called him up and said, hey, my check's in the mail. You should have had it. Well, if it's not here by 5 o'clock, it should be by. Well, I go to panic and I go to freaking out. I'm not kidding. Who wants to be without power? We lose it for a day or two and we... Yeah. Lord have mercy. Yeah. What just so happened, I was... I think I was at home then. It was about 3 o'clock or so. Go ahead. check that I'd done sent back. They were just going to apply it to the next month. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I needed that. There ain't nothing we can do. We just apply it to the next month. He gives me the money and I go pay it. Get all that taken care of. Well, by then, I was down here. Embarrassed. Yes, humiliated. Yes, humiliated. Yes, Felt like a loser. Sometimes that's good. Because they ain't about to discover a revival with her that night. It was on a Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, we was going. After all this had happened, I just wanted to shut myself up in the closet. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go nowhere. Definitely didn't want to go to church.
God said, preach my word, I cried like a baby. Went home, cried like a baby. Couldn't tell my wife what had happened. Couldn't get it out. It was one of those times where God just completely shut me up. Couldn't talk, couldn't tell her. Crying, weeping. She was crying and weeping. It didn't take her just a minute. She said, God called you to preach. I knew before you did. God's been good to me. Amen. He's been so good to me. Time after time after time, I've let him down. Let him down. Well, uh... And he's still there. He's still my day star. Mm. He's still leading me every day. Still directing me every day. Go ahead, brother. And I thank God for that. I can't get over it. I don't want to get over it. And I hope to God I never get over it. Amen. <laughs> if I do, does somebody go ahead and shoot me? Because I know what it's like to live in the world. I've been a part of it. I woke up in the hog pen, friend. I'm telling you. When it feels like you just hit rock bottom. Sick to your stomach of the things of this world. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. It's a sickening feeling. When you finally come to yourself, like the prodigal did, and you realize he's got everything for you if you'll just come back to him. Amen. So I went crawling back and got back up yoked with the master. <laughs> and been yoked up ever since. Yeah. Have no desire to get unyoked. Because I got my feel of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why I'm sharing this. It ain't part of my message tonight. Maybe it's for some of you teens in here. Stay yoked up with Jesus. You will never go wrong doing right. Amen. I promise you that. You're right. Amen. I promise you that. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Number three, by remembering every day he defeated my sin. My sin. Look at verse number four. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you. In you. In you, child of God. Yeah. He dwells in you. Yes. That's the word. Glory to God, he dwells in you. The he that is in the world. I know who's in the world, and I don't want no part of it. Yeah, I don't want no part of it. I want to share this. This ain't even part of my message. God done changed me. Do it. <laughs> Sunday night, I got on something. Sunday night, I couldn't get off of it. Yes, that was good. Worry. And I want to share with you tonight what brought that worry in my heart. Me and Donald Pickett cut up all the time. He says, you don't stress for nothing. You don't ever worry about nothing. And my wife will tell you, don't nothing bother me. Don't let it phase me. And I'm not saying that's the faith that I've got. I don't know. I'm just saying I, I know God's going to provide. And I've seen him do, do it so many times in my life. But this got me the other day. I was in a dump truck hauling up at Burlington in between Burlington and Medford. And I got to thinking. I don't know if I was getting a little prideful or what happened. But I was like, you know, me and my wife, by the grace of God, have raised our daughter to be 18. Amen. She's been a pretty good kid. She stayed out of trouble. She's not perfect. We've drug her to church all of her life, raised her in a Christian home. We've done pretty 
good. And just like that, this comes to my mind. What are you going to do when she goes to college? Stress out. She's not going to be in your home, <laughs> under your care, <coughs> under your protection, where you know every little thing that she's doing. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do then? And I got to think, God, why would you pop me in the mouth with something like this? got to think a little more. That wasn't God. That wasn't God. That was the devil putting worry in me. Trying to knock this old boy down, and he did. Believe me, he did. He got under my skin, and I, I carried that worry around for many, many, many days. And I still carry it around because I hope and I pray that we've raised her to the best of our ability. But I know I've come short in many areas. I know I have. And I'm going to have to give her, turn her over to God. Because I can't be with her every step of the way. And I've been there for 18 years, making sure she is at home when she's supposed to be, making sure she wasn't out doing things she wasn't supposed to be. I said, now what are you going to do? When she leaves. So I got to thinking on that really hard. And I got to praying on that really hard. And I got to meditating on that really hard. And when you run it up and down the interstate, you ain't got nothing else to do. Mm. Oh. And God took me back. And I mentioned this Sunday night. God took me back to the Apostle Paul. When he had the thorn in the flesh. That ailment that just got under Paul's crawl that he struggled with daily to keep on going for God. And Paul would ask God, would you remove this thorn in the flesh? And God would remove it. So now I'm thinking that that little bit of worry that I've got about my daughter moving out and going to college is my little thorn in the flesh. Now think about this. When the devil gives you something to worry about, to stress about, God will take that if you will let him. Now you've got to let him. You've got to be willing to say, God, what can I do with this? He'll use it for his glory. Because what he's wanting to do is he's wanting a closer relationship with you. It will draw you to your needs more in prayer, which is building that relationship that he longs for so dearly. And that's helped me with my little thorn in the flesh. Felt like the preacher says, let's turn this dog around. And let's use it for the glory of God. <clears throat> and let's take that worry, that stress, those things that defeat us daily, and let's turn them around. Let's spend more time on our knees in the Word of God And use it for God's glory. Because I believe in prayer. I know prayer works. I've seen God do some miraculous things. Miraculous things. And if we'll stay faithful to Him, and if we'll stay and spend our time in prayer, talking and begging and asking God to help us with these things, I believe he'll do it. I believe he'll do it. Let me share this little story. Because a mom and dad had a teenage daughter. While they were at home, she was out and about on the town with a girlfriend. Went out to eat. 
after they've done something to eat, they decided to go to a little pull off overlooking the mountain, overlooking the city, and sit there and eat their food and just have a good little time, like all teenagers do, staying out of trouble. And about that time, there were headlights that were coming toward them. So the girl automatically hits her door locks. And about that time, the dad at home had one of those feelings. He said, honey, we need to pray yeah. for our daughter right now. Mm -hmm. And as they were praying for the little girl, that car that had pulled up turned out to be a police car, which was a great thing. But immediately when that police car drove away, somebody slid out from underneath that car and tried to get in where those girls were. So if those headlights hadn't been coming, she wouldn't have locked her door. And if mom and daddy hadn't have been on their knees at home praying for that little girl, who knows what might have happened. I believe in prayer. I know prayer works. Mamas and daddies, pray for your kids. Amen. Do your best to keep them in the house of God. Sure. Faithful. Amen. And I will tell you this, and I've learned this. These teenagers know when you're not real. Oh, sure. sure. Amen. They know when you're not real. So what I'm saying is if you'll be faithful to the house of God, if you'll love him, chances are they're going to follow suit. Stay faithful to God. You want to be a blessing to your pastor? Be faithful to church. Amen. Amen. What encourages this old boy is to see them teens come rolling in. Sunday school. Youth on Wednesday night. It encourages me. If I could ever get them all here at one time, we might have to move on out to the family life center. <laughs> and that'd be all right, too. Yeah. Be an encourager to your pastor. Be an encourager to your children. Be that light that they need to see. Faithful. In love with the Lord. In love. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for saving us, oh boy. Lord, I thank you for calling me to preach. Just for the opportunity to stand every now and then and share a little bit of what you give me. Oh, yeah. God, I don't want you nothing. <coughs> don't want to be nothing. But just let me be a little light to shine for you. To try to be an encouragement to your people. Father, I pray for everyone present tonight, God, that you would bless them. Lord, I pray for desire to be placed in their heart. God, that they fall in love with you. That they realize just how good you are. How merciful you've been. Lord, I just want to say I love you. And I thank you for this church, for my pastor, for the families here. What love we have here at Bethlehem. God, and I thank you for that because it's not like that everywhere you go. I look forward to coming to the house of God. Lord, help us to be a light to shine. Help us to be a blessing to somebody each and every day. God, we love you. We thank you and we love you.